Hello and welcome to Caldwell County Today. Today I have with me Taylor Hoover from the Caldwell County Health Department and Taylor's with us to talk about coronavirus. Welcome Taylor. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is something that's really impacting our community right now and people have a lot of questions. Yes, absolutely. So start with what is coronavirus? So we think of coronavirus as this new thing, but actually there's been coronaviruses around before. So it's a large family of viruses and they can cause illnesses that range from a common cold to more serious illnesses. So you may have heard of either like MERS or SARS, so those are versions of the coronavirus that we've seen before. So they are zootonic, so that means that they're transmitted between animals and humans. So the most recent strand of the coronavirus that we hear about today um, it's called the 2019 novel coronavirus, but you may also have heard of it being called COVID-19. Yes. So it originated in Wuhan, China, and it basically just causes respiratory illness. So that's really what it is. So symptoms are like shortness of breath. Shortness of breath, maybe some fever, um, or like a dry cough, you may recognize. And how long do symptoms appear after exposure to the virus? So you may see them between like 2 and 14 days after you've been exposed. But I think it's important to say again, it is a respiratory illness. So that, right. those, those are the symptoms that you should be looking for if you think you've been exposed. Definitely. What do you do if you have symptoms? So if you do experience those symptoms, definitely call your primary care physician. Um, you definitely want to call ahead and not just show up in you know, the facility. Um, you want to just tell them the symptoms that have occurred and how long you've been experiencing them and if you've traveled outside of the county or done any more extensive traveling. So there are plenty of tests available, but we just want to reiterate that we want to say this for people who are actually showing symptoms. So you're definitely going to have to meet some kind of criteria to be tested so we don't just want everybody showing up, you know, in the emergency department or at the doctor trying to get a test. But Right, and because I have been working closely with your department over the last a few weeks, I have learned that there is a criteria in place. Right. And you will be screened, if you show the symptoms, you will be screened for other things before you're screened for the coronavirus. Definitely, yeah. Um, of course, we want to roll out the, the flu first. Right. Which is still a big problem with all the coronavirus going on, too. Mm -hmm. So roll that out and then just make sure you're running a fever and, you know, having the cough and the other symptoms as well. So we talked about kind of what it looks like and, and again be sure to call ahead if you are experiencing these symptoms because um, doctor's offices, the health department, um, even the emergency department, they have protocols in place to protect you and to protect other people coming in because they are still operational for a whole host of, of health issues. Right, yeah. So, we still have to do day to day operations so we want to keep those people safe right. as well. So be sure to call ahead. So how else can you protect yourself if you're healthy right now? How do you protect yourself? Yeah, so a lot of the ways that you can seem pretty simple, but they're really effective. So of course you've heard, wash your hands, wash your hands. So you wanna do this for at least 20 seconds, mm -hmm. of course with soap, um, warm water. And then you can always, of course, sing a song, you know, happy birthday twice, that's <laughs> gonna be 20 seconds. We've all heard that one. Then if you don't have stuff that's available, you can use hand sanitizer. Preferably wash your hands, it's more effective, um, but you want to use an alcohol base that's at least 70% alcohol. Um, of course, stay at home if you're sick, you don't want to expose anybody, and then avoid close contact with people who are sick. And you also want to avoid touching your face, I know that's a really hard one for me to do, but avoid touching your face, especially you know with unwashed hands. Mm -hmm. And then um, just disinfect all the surfaces that you touch pretty frequently, like doorknobs, um, your phone, I've even heard like, you know, your credit cards and that sort of things, things that you don't really think about. There are a lot of things that you touch that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. um, I myself was thinking last night, I was like, oh my gosh, like my hair dryer. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about it until I just, I saw it on my counter and I was like, I probably should wipe that down. I haven't even thought of that, but yeah, you touch that every day. <laughs> you touch that every day. Um, so there, there are a lot of surfaces that you touch, and you do want to protect yourself and your family from this disease. Absolutely. Um, we also hear a lot about social distancing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Um, so social distancing 
basically means, you know, you want to stay six feet away from people if possible. We realize, you know, of course, that's not always possible. Especially <laughs> We're not six feet away <laughs> from each other. But what the CDC recommends is, you know, you just want, don't want to have any gatherings that are 50 people or more and just kind of avoid close contact as possible. So no handshaking, hugging, and that sort of thing for right now. And then especially with the older population, we want to make sure we don't visit in person and we uh, call people over the phone and utilize FaceTime and that sort of thing. And I would say, I would encourage people to reach out to their older family members, friends, neighbors, just to check on them by phone to make sure they're, they're doing okay. Yeah, definitely. We also hear a lot of information. I heard a rumor that, and you can fill that in with uh, probably a thousand different rumors about coronavirus. Okay. How can we stop the spread of rumors? So like you said, you know, you just want to get information from a reliable source. So basically any information that we're getting is going to be either from the CDC, so that's the Center for Disease Control, mm -hmm. or NCDHHS, so that's the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, so you can contact their websites and also call county um, health department's website. That's all going to have the same information that they're sharing. Um, we also have created a hotline at the health department just specifically for the COVID-19. So the phone number for that um, will be posted on the Facebook page, but it's 426-8456. So you can contact that if you have any type of symptoms or just like general questions regarding the virus. And you do have... You have health educators and nurses answering those calls. So depending on the, the scope of the question, you will get the best information we have right now. Right. Um, and following the health department's Facebook page is a really good way to get credible information. You've been working really hard, I know, over the last couple weeks to make sure that your page is updated with really good information. So right, yeah. thank you for doing that. Yeah, of course. I keep people informed as much as possible. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I know we're telling people not to gather, mm -hmm. which for some people that's really, really hard. They're extroverts and they love being around people. I talked to my sister and she's like, I don't know if I can handle not going to work and being stuck in my house. Mm -hmm. She lives in South Georgia. They are not to that point yet, but that's one of the things she said. So what are some positive things you can do? Right. So for me, that would be a dream, but for people that are <laughs> extroverts, there's definitely a lot of things you can do. So people are thinking, you know, you have to stay inside and you can't do anything, but you can definitely go outside. Um, you know, thankfully we live in a rural area where, you know, most people have a yard so you can go out, walk your dog, just go for a walk. Um, you know, like we said, call friends and family and just make sure you're still getting socialization, mm -hmm. but remember that you're not necessarily trapped inside your house. So there's plenty of things that you can do to kind of keep yourself busy. I live by the Greenway and I've noticed more people walking because you can have that social distance when you're out walking on the Greenway, for example. Right, yeah. Like this weekend, I'm planning on going hiking, so right. still won't be, you know, within the six feet of people, but like you said, still getting to be outside. Get, get outside. It's probably better for us than anything else we can do. Right. If you're not touching surfaces either, probably. Exactly. You might be touching your face. <laughs> Just have to remember that. Take your Germex. <laughs> yeah, still take your Germex. Um, what about people who, who can't get out? And what resources, food, things like that? How do you do that? Yeah, so there's definitely some different things that you can do as far as like access and food where you don't have to contact uh, people. You can utilize a lot of the delivery services. So I know like Walmart and Foodline, they do delivery to your house, but then also, you know, you can do the pickup. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you can just like ask like a family or a friend to do the shopping for you and that sort of thing. I know some other um, states have like set up the senior hours for shopping. Um, so if you aren't or not able to do that here, just like getting somebody else to go out and do that for you. And I did notice last night um, as I was watching TV in the few minutes that I had, um, it was a crawler on one of the Charlotte stations noting that Dollar General was doing um, senior hours the first hour of the, their business day. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, for seniors, you might want to check that out. Um, what about bars and restaurants? Yeah, so since they are closed, like for dine-in, you know, you can still definitely go and get pickup or drive-through. 
And I really think that would kind of help the industry stay stable during a time like this. And one of the things I've noticed here in downtown Lenore, a lot of the businesses that don't have drive throughs they have blocked off a couple parking spaces where if you call your order in, they have a way to get the food to you. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure all their procedures probably, you know, call or text once you arrive. I'm not sure, but right. anyway, uh, it's definitely something to look into so that you are s supporting our local businesses. Definitely. And I know cooking gets old after a couple of days, so you can still avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can still avoid that. Taylor, what else? Is there anything else that you want to say about the coronavirus, reaching out to the health department? Um, what your team's doing? Anything like that? So, of course, our team, we're trying to be, you know, proactive and prevent um, the spread, so, mm -hmm. but also just telling people, you know, to remain calm. While this is, you know, what we consider a pandemic, there's a lot of things we can do to prevent it and just remember, you know, just practicing proper hygiene and, like we said, social distancing. We can really just, you know, slow the, the curve on this and so just not to panic. And you can always call the health department or the hotline if you have any more questions. Taylor, I know you're busy. Thank you for taking time to come and talk to us. Yeah, you're welcome, Paige. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you for watching Caldwell County Today.